This is one of those bills that's personal to me. It's one of those things that really gets under my skin. Because what we've done in government as we've faced these difficult budget choices as it relates to the judicial branch of government is we've given authority, and I was a cul culprit in some of this stuff many years ago, to simply add fees to everything with the notion that those fees would be able to fund the judicial branch of government. Well, what did we learn from that process, this great study that came out in that, that New Jersey study found? What did we learn as a result of this? A, that we're really not collecting much money, that it's really illusory in terms of what we're really doing. Two, that we're dramatically impacting people's lives. Charging somebody $800 for a, for, for a jaywalking ticket or whatever it is, and they immediately lose their license because they miss a court appearance on matters that don't relate to uh, public safety issues, is akin to charging them $100 million. They can't afford it. They've got to pay for food for their kids or shelter. The punishment doesn't fit the crime. We have made, and this is the first in a series of many bills that I'm going to introduce as long as I'm here, to, to, in, to, to fix this injustice in the system. And so what happened? The governor says in his, in his, uh, for his 15, 16 budget that we want to have an amnesty program that says folks that have these, this $10 billion worth of court-ordered uh, uh, fines out there, we're going to allow you to charge 50 cents on the dollar and get these things cleaned up with the theory that we're going to get some money in the state. The LAO has different opinions about it, but whatever. We've seen these amnesty programs. Fomer did one for taxes and that kind of stuff. What we've done with the benefit of the, the, the folks that are working as part of this coalition, is taken to the next level. One, in broad context, we said, you know what, if you're really poor, you're going to make it 20 percent, 50 percent still. These numbers are huge. And two, and most importantly, because 4.2 million Californians over the last eight years have lost their licenses because of this, we said once you apply for the program, you get your license back as long as it one of, you know, we can go through the details, but the basic message is it's not one of these horrible uh, incidences where you're pu endangering public safety. We have cases and stories, somebody riding the metro and got a ticket, people jaywalking, a uh, fella who goes and tries to pay their ticket, stands in line downtown Los Angeles all day long, can't get in, gets his license lost because he didn't hit make, get, make it in court in time. I mean, just unbelievably unjust approach to how the judicial branch works for most folks. There's a lot more details. I'm talking about it a lot. Uh, there's a lot of comments, which I'll certainly address at any point in time. I think they're pretty good from the, from the committee. I want to let the uh, witnesses testify, and I'd certainly like your support on this measure. Thank you. I would note again, there is no opposition to this bill. There are some questions about scope and targeting, so, but you can be Alicia. brief. Uh, my name is Carlisha Williams. Um, I'm in favor of SB 405. I got tickets, which resulted into me getting my license suspended. Um, I lost my daughter, and then I lost my job. So I couldn't pay, and the fines and fees were so high. They Every year they start going up. It seems like every month it was going up. Um, I'm a caregiver, so I need my license to for appointments and things like that um i'm in favor of this program because it will help people in my situation to progress in life period so thank you thank you thank you <laughs> thank you very much it's important for us to hear others in support my name is Teresa Zen, and I am a legal fellow and staff attorney with the nonprofit organization, A New Way of Life Reentry Project in Los Angeles. And I represent formerly incarcerated people in traffic court to minimize the impact of traffic fines and to navigate driver's license suspensions. And in the past five months, I've represented over 80 clients whose licenses are suspended because of an unpaid traffic ticket. Now, in my experience, traffic tickets and license suspensions have the dual effect of holding my clients back from finding work and also recriminalizing my clients. Many of my clients are actively seeking work and need a driver's license either to qualify for their jobs or to drive to work without fear of being pulled over for driving on a suspended license. And traffic tickets, in my experience, also serve to recriminalize and re-traumatize my clients. When people cannot afford to pay mounting penalty assessments, court costs, and mandatory fees, 
Um, some have issued warrants issued for their arrest, and many officers use these traffic warrants to detain, handcuff, harass, and hold individuals in jail, all for nonviolent <laughs> minor traffic infractions. <coughs> One client of mine, who I wish could be here to testify, um, is a 28-year-old African-American man who was ticketed for failing to pay a metro fare, a fare that totaled $1.50. When he could not afford to pay the traffic ticket, which is now upwards of $500 because it had gone to collections, his license was suspended and a warrant was issued for his arrest. He was held for two days in jail, and as a result, he lost his job. In his words, quote, it was extremely embarrassing to be detained and handcuffed while the officers probed me for information unrelated to my warrant. They ran my record, questioning me about my past convictions, which all well exceed seven years and were nonviolent crimes. They also profiled me as a gang member, which I have no record of. I left the jail feeling deflated, sick, hurt, and unhuman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, me too. I know. Um, <clears throat> Madam Chair, Mike Carroll with the Western Center on Law and Poverty. We are one of the sponsors of this measure, and we urge your support. Thank, Thank you. you. Madam Chairman, Michael Gunning, Personal Insurance Federation. We're here also in support of uh, Senator Hertzberg's measure. Thank you. Jesse Stout, Legal Services for Prisoners with Children, is proud to co-sponsor SB 405. Thank you. Elisa De La Piana from the East Bay Community Law Center. We see hundreds of people in this situation every year. Proud to be a co-sponsor of this bill. Latoya Ramsey, National Association of Social Workers, California Chapter, in support. Madam Chair, Micah Doctoroff, ACLU of California, here in proud support. Daniel Oakenfuss, on behalf of the California Department of Insurance, in support. Tim Murray, on behalf of a lot of law enforcement associations, in support. Khalif Asagai, on behalf of the California Public Defenders Association, in support. Michael Levy, on behalf of the California Commission on Access to Justice, also in support. Laura Mignani on behalf of the American Friends Service Committee, also in support. Jim Lindbergh on behalf of the Friends Committee on Legislation of California, in support. Welcome back. Dennis Garcia on behalf of the California Attorneys for Criminal Justice, in support. Thank you. Are there speakers in opposition to the bill? Seeing and hearing none, uh, Senator Leno. Senator Hertzberg, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for picking this up. It should rattle all of us and make us outraged and Dollar curious. 50. Just the waste of the bureaucracy, no. the extraordinary injustice. We know there's injustice in the world, but this is unnecessary, and we can do something about it. And I would be more than honored to join you if you'll have me as a principal co-author. 100%. All in. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Senator Anderson. That amendment. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly, uh, but I would say that uh, we've set the bar too low. The problem is that this is uh, impacting everybody. Right. You know, so you could be middle class, hard working, you have a That's couple right. of kids, you are barely above uh, uh, living within your means because perhaps you took a downside in your right. job, your, your home is no longer of the value that it used to be, and uh, I see consistently in my district where someone gets a fix-it ticket or they get some other ticket. If they could have fixed the light, they would have fixed the light. Of course. But as a result, uh, they lose their job or they lose uh, uh, their ability to pay other bills because these are so punitive in their nature. It's a horrible way to fund our court <coughs> system. It's a horrible way to fund all the other issues that we fund with this. I I'd like to see this bill expanded uh, and not so narrowly focused, I'd also uh, like to see uh, it in perpetuity. I mean, this, this is a limited amnesty. Uh, why do we have to be so, such money-grubbing legislators that we're not <laughs> thinking bigger? <laughs> so uh, I, my challenge to you, Senator, is to uh, push the envelope and let's just reverse some of the funding that we put on the backs of hardworking Californians who are trying to make a living, who are trying to do the right thing, and not just focus on the poverty stricken, because many of these folks are just one step out of poverty, that's right. and yet we're doing nothing for them. Uh, and, and that's not right, because we should be doing this for everyone. The whole act of putting these uh, penalties there and collecting resources that way is just flat out wrong. 
Well, it, it, Senator, I think what it really boils down to, you're right, and I completely agree, it's the first step. We basically dovetailed on the governor's effort to do his amnesty program and tried to expand it as best as we could. I, I certainly would love to do what you're saying, but I think that it's really going to boil down to fundamentally changing how we fund the courts. It means telling the truth in the budget, given, you know, make sure the courts are operating efficiently and intelligently, but at the same time, give them the money and reverse these kinds of penalty assessments for everybody, not just for people that are poor. But right now, we've got 4.2 million people who's lost their license. We've got these horrible stories that we're hearing now, and we've got to correct those. And at least let's get people back for the insurance purposes, for all the kinds of reasons, their licenses back so they can get a job and not live in, in the way they're living. We, we have this whole driver's license program talking about folks that don't have legal status, and we've got 10 times the number of people out there who are legal status who don't have driver's licenses because it's got taken away because we got an upside down criminal just a system of traffic tickets Sen okay. senator you are absolutely correct don't look at me look into the camera because i think every american needs to hear this <laughs> <laughs> okay the bill has been moved would you like to close yes i, I would and i just th there's some comments the committee made i just want to just to 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 clarify in the analysis i thought were quite important and they really bear on the governor and what he does first the issue of this is county by county and how does that work well, I believe, I'm hoping, certainly going to advocate to the governor that just says county shall. So it's not optional. I think that we put that initially as a placeholder. So if he says shall, that's not an issue. Second, you know, with finance, we're going to determine how to give notices because whether it's with their registration or whatever, we're going to have to come up with a way. Everybody's got to get notice because so many people aren't going to otherwise notify. And they're going to have to have it in different languages and the like in terms of, of, of that. In terms of the tracking, going back to starting this as of effective January 1st, 2013, again, that's I'm going to try to push the administration, but we're going to try to make this as broad as possible. Possible. So these are observations that were made in the report, uh, in your analysis, are correct. Uh, uh, we're just trying to figure this out, and a lot of it's going to tee off of where the governor's program is, and I certainly hope it's mandatory across the state. And so, you know, look, this is, as I say, a first part of a long conversation about how to properly fu fund the courts and not just to simply add fees, and I would respectfully ask for your uh, support in this measure. Thank you. I agree that this is a very good bill. We've actually reached the point on these fees that they're diminishing returns because judges yeah. simply aren't going to, they know it's useless <laughs> right. and they don't want to institute the fees. So I think this is the beginning, well, it's a continuation of a conversation about how to fund the courts that's been going on for a number of years. And I think this will be a clarifying uh, feature in looking looking at the court's budgets. Um, thank you very much for bringing it forward, Senator. Thank you very much. And please read the roll. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. Anderson? Aye. Anderson, aye. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Lou? McGuire? Monning? Stone? We will hold the roll open for thank the absent members. Thank you so members. much, members. Thank, thank you, members. Thank you, guys. Thank you.